What kind of a draw was he? I mean, you were with him probably at his peak. You, I know you did a lot of six bands with Andre around the WWF in the, the early to mid 80s. Andre sold out every building he went to. Yeah. You know, you got to stop and think about during that period of time to see a guy like that. You know, you don't see it. Even today, you don't see people like that. So people knew that Andre was somebody that if you don't see him today, you probably never see him. Right. And they knew that it, it's going to be a while before somebody else of that caliber comes along. And so far, since Andre passed, nobody else had took his place. No. It was just one of a kind type of guy that just come in. And if you don't see it now, you won't see it again. Like going to the circus, and you see the three-headed monster. There's only one three-headed monster on the whole earth. So if you don't go and buy a ticket to see him while he's in your town, then it, you're probably never going to ever get to see him. So, so he was a phenomenon, not only to uh, back then, but also today's too. Wow. Well, uh, Andre, I know the documentary again, it's coming on HBO. His stories are legendary of his drinking. Did you ever experience the Andre, well, the giant, well, and the bar? What, what was the drinking when, experience When, when, when you like? look at the size of Andre, he drank less than everybody else when you look at his size. True. You know, but what it was, because he was so big, what would be a six-pack to me is like one beer to him, see? And he would hold them like this, <laughs> and it'd be one sip. Massive hands. Yep. He would hold it just like that with two fingers, throw away the can, just like that. So a sip a beer to me is a can a sip to him. And he has 64 teeth in his mouth. The average human got 32. He had more teeth than the than average, average person? Human, yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. How do you get more and teeth? If, I don't know. That's why Andre, his biggest fear was that the scientists, they offered millions and millions of dollars for his body when he died. Really? And, he, and, he, and that's why he got cremated right away. Really? Yeah. He didn't want them digging him up and, and, and experimenting on him. Wow. Yeah. He, was, he had that fear. Really? But he was what we call a missing link. He yeah. was, yeah. Sure. He was a miss. And if you look at Andre and his built, Andre the Giant and Law Littlebrook had the same physique. <laughs> you know what? You're not. He too was far not off. built like a he was built like a giant dwarf. Interesting. When you look at Andre, you saw a giant dwarf. You did not when you look at a big show, you see a big man. Look at Colleen, you look at a big man. When you look at Andre, you see a dwarf, a giant dwarf. It's, I never thought of it that way. That's right. His hands came to his hip. Yeah. He had short legs, a long torso, a big head, and short arms. Unbelievable. Look at every picture of Andre, and then you look at a picture of, of, of any midget that been a been little lure. Take a picture of a little lure, put it right beside Andre, they got the same built. Just one's much bigger than the other. He was built like a giant dwarf. Did you ever travel with Andre at all? Yes, I did. Well, how hard was it for the man to actually travel? What was that like? He'd break your seat. In the car you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah, yeah. You, your car go in the shop the next day. Now, you'd have to put him, I imagine, in the front with the seat all the way back? And then he would lean back, lean in to get in, to put his leg in, that seat pop every time. Talk about a struggle. Things that we take for granted, getting in and out of a car for him yep. was an extreme challenge every time challenge, he did it. Yeah, and finally had to give him a, a special made van to drive him around, because none of the rest would give him a ride because he kept breaking the seat. Who drove in the van with him? Uh, on the school and drove him around some, and then they had another guy. Uh, they, they always had somebody to take him around. Tim Frenchy. White, I think. Yeah, Frenchy, Tim White, and a lot of guys. Frenchy Bernard. Him. Yep, yeah, he would drive him around, but he always had a driver because uh, Andre, uh, they couldn't find a seat bigger. And Andre never stopped growing. And that's, I don't think the fans understand that. Yeah, Imagine yeah. how painful that must have been on his body. It was, that's why he drank a lot. Yeah. To, uh, he drank a lot to uh, kill the pain. But Andre never stopped growing. They had medicine. The big show is taking the medicine. And they offered Andre, and Andre wouldn't take the medicine. How come? He, he said that God made him like this, and it, it was not his place to change what God made. Well, if it could have extended his life, I think it might have been he, a good decision. He, 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 when Andre speak, leave it alone. Well, I tell you. Because he would, he would throw you across the room. The, he would reach right over the table, grab you by your belt buckle, and sling you way over there. Now, did you ever experience it, the angry I'd giant wrestle, like I'd, that? I've wrestled Andre before. It was like rest in the refrigerator. Really? Yeah. yeah. You, it's nothing you could do against that. It was, it was nothing. When Andre passed away, he had to be at least seven, 800 pounds when he passed wow. away. He looked least. awful towards the end. Yeah. He was doing matches in Mexico and Japan, and they were available on YouTube, and he just looked. It was really tough to watch. Yeah, because his so joint. So hard for him to move. Yeah, his joint started to uh, uh, lose his strength. Yeah. You know.
besides his joints started deteriorating uh, a great deal. But Andre punished his body a lot. You know, he never took care of himself. He never worked out. He, he didn't eat good. Never went he to the gym? Never went to the gym. I asked him one time to go to the gym. He said, I'm big enough. <laughs> that was it. He said, I'm big enough. Do you have any favorite memories of him that you experienced? Well, I do, but I, but I, I don't like talking about it in public because some of it is... is um, have a sexual na nature to it. Oh, wait, Tony, wait a minute. Yeah, but I don't like talking about A him. horny That's giant? Is that what you're talking about? Well, we all were. You were, all were, were. there Andre the Giant Well, rats. what Donald Trump say is true. When you got money and fame, you could do anything you want with women. And Andre had his women? He had women coming out the yang gang. They wanted to see just how they giant he was? Is that what the you're <laughs> They want to be with a giant. They want to be with a giant. Oh, They're Tony, guys, we got to hear these sometimes. The guys get more play with giants and midgets. The midgets, too? The midgets, too. Now, why yeah. the midgets? Because, I mean, how often can a woman be with a midget? <laughs> I tell you. The certain women got a certain curiosity about themselves. That when I lived, in, when I first moved to Maine, I was the only black guy in, uh, in my town, and every white girl there wanted to see was it true or not. Really? Because they never been for a black guy. Now, but you were with someone. I was, I was this married. Was after I was married, so, so I didn't endure it because of my wife. But I had a lot of offers, a lot of offers, young, beautiful, uh, a white girl, just because I was black, no other reason. So your favorite Andre memories of him in hotel bedrooms, is that what you're trying to say? Yep, yep. After a night of drinking. Yep, that the women would come up to his bar, they would bring him food, they'd bring his beard, they'd show him around, they'd do everything. French for wine? Oh, he loved he the wanted. French wine, didn't whatever, he? Whatever he wanted, the women were there. <laughs> But they were there for a lot of guys. Ric Flair, the, the same thing. Ric Flair had more women coming in and out of his door than you could shake a stick at Harley Race. There was not a wrestler that I knew that, that uh, didn't have a lot of women running out of their room. I would say the only exception, when you look back on it, would be like Tito Santana. Uh, he was very faithful uh, <clears throat> to his wife. And uh, that was about it. Wow. Well, I tell you, any locker room that Andre was in. I'm sure he was the, he controlled that locker room. No, Andre no? was very laid back. Really? Uh, Andre now, what, was, would, yeah, yeah, what yeah. was an Andre like in the locker room? Well, Andre wanted to be like everybody else. He liked but, to play yeah, cards, I Yeah, believe. he loved to play cards. He was would, he would just like everybody else. He was, you know, he didn't dominate nothing. Uh, he was very, very humble guy, you know, among the boys. He liked being around the boys. He liked the boys, you know. He, uh, what, do you think the professional wrestling locker room was almost his safe zone? Where he was around people well, he knew. Well, the locker room used to, be, used to be all wrestlers' safe zone. It's not no more. Right. You know. The, uh, see, wrestling ended in 1985. The World Wrestling Federation was live at the world's most famous arena, Madison Square Garden in New York, New York, Monday, January the 17th, 1994. In the opening contest, Scott Putzke beat Iron Mike Sharp. Rick Steiner battled Ludwig Borger to a double countout, keeping Borger out of the Royal Rumble and ending his WWF career. WWF Intercontinental Champion Razor Ramon retained the title over Jeff Jarrett via disqualification when Shawn Michaels interfered. WWF World Champion Yokozuna retained the title over Tatanka, who did a stretcher job after two bonsai drops. The Quebecers defeated WWF Tag Team Champions Marty Jannetty and the 123 Kid to win the titles. And in the main event, Owen Hart won a 30 man New York City Royal Rumble, last eliminating Fah 2. Brett and Owen Hart fought off the head shrinkers after the match. If you were at MSG Live, share your memories in the comment section below. Use the links in the description box to keep wrestling legends working in our eBay store and on our acclaimed Patreon streaming service so we can bring you more interactive superstar shoot interviews to relive the good old days of professional wrestling. Boston Wrestling Sports in the MWF explodes into a new year with professional wrestling content galore and need you to join our family. Every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. after our Monday Night Raw review, it's Wrestling Inside Us at your house with WWE Hall of Famer Mr. USA Tony Atlas. Wednesday nights at 10 p.m. after NXT and AEW, join rotating legends on Wrestling Insiders Special Edition. Every Thursday night at 10 p.m. after our NXT and Dynamite review, it's Marty Jannetty's No Holds Barred, Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll Journey on Wrestling Insiders, Party with Marty. Friday night after SmackDown, don't miss John Cena Sr.'s Wrestling Insiders Fabulous Fridays. Plus, look for classic clips, history videos, bonus live episodes, pay-per-view watch-alongs, and more. For less than a cup of coffee at Starbucks, get early ad-free access to our Wrestling Insider talk shows, our acclaimed 
acclaimed studio shoot interview DVD library and help keep wrestling legends working during the worst of times, join our growing family at patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling.